afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Abbott. I'm a solutions architect, and I work with Arif and uh, Surya on the Virtual Mix product. What I'm going to be showing today is a bit more detailed view of some of the internals of how uh, Virtual MX put, it works together with the, the different uh, components, the VCP and the VFP, the virtual uh, control plane and virtual forwarding plane. <clears throat> Give a bit of insight on some of the packaging, uh, the infrastructure that comes with the packaging that, we, that you can download from Juniper.net and uh, some of the reasoning behind that. And then we'll go into a uh, couple short video demos. This is going to be a video that I'm going to treat like a presentation so instead of switching back and forth between slides and video. So moving right along, the uh, first thing I'd like to show here is the internal um, view, if you will, of how the components all fit together. Uh, RF has already covered some of this information, but um, at the top you have the, the virtual control plane. At the bottom, you have the VFP, and then uh, that sits above, of course, the physical uh, um, OS, the host OS and the hardware. Uh, they communicate, as he had said, by an internal bridge, which has a IP addresses that's fixed today. Um, so when you set up the, uh, with at least our scripts, it will automatically create all this infrastructure for you. Uh, using OpenStack, you would use heat templates uh, that uh, we'll be publishing. Uh, to do this as well, so you can instantiate four, six, eight, however many uh, virtual MX instances you would like, uh, using the different flavors that you can you pre-configure. And then uh, it also has two different management interfaces on the on the, on the left-hand side there, where that gives you your 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 control your routing engine uh, management interface, which we use uh, call FXP0, which is our management interface. And there's also a management interface into the virtual forwarding plane as well, that you can connect uh, connect to and get some statistics and stuff off of the, uh, the virtual PFE. <clears throat> okay, uh, next. So we have at the top here you see VMX Lite. As part of the packaging, uh, when you download VMX from, from Juniper.net, it's a tarball. And in that tarball is uh, some scripting infrastructure that we've put together and the actual images. Uh, and, config and there's some configuration templates for VMX. The images that are shipped are, as Arif said, there's a control plane image, which is Junos, and then we have two separate forwarding planes, two separate packages. The reason for that is one of the packages, the next light for here, for instance, is uh, not using the high performance mode method. So what that does is it's a much lighter weight deployment model, and uh, you can deploy more, assuming you have enough memory, of course, uh, on your servers. Whereas when you have the poly mode uh, PFE, it's going to really consume basically the entire thread on that CPU when it's running. So in this instance, this is something where if you're doing lab topologies or um, you're doing just lightweight sort of uh, forwarding requirements, say 100 megabits or less, you can do this. Uh, same exact functionality. Uh, you don't get QoS, I don't believe. Correct, some QoS, but again, it's... Yeah, but 100 megabits is so much. And it only supports vertio. Right, so you run into the same situation as right. you had mentioned before where you have this uh, complete sort of separation and you could have contention, especially if you're sharing NICs across multiple VMs <coughs> and these types of things. Because you can only schedule out of, the, out of the individual instance, multiple instances you could run into some sort of uh, uh, constriction. <coughs> Moving on. <coughs> so what, I'm showing, what, what we have here is uh, at a high level with the minimum specifications, the minimum requirements, uh, the minimum requirement for the for the uh, light image is Nellum. So you can have a server back from 2008 and uh, load this image. It's not required to buy the latest and greatest uh, uh, CPUs to work. It does require four vCPUs, and we'll get to that in a minute. And the minimum memory is seven gigabytes, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. And the network uh, cards, anything that Vertio supports, you can use. So quick anatomy of the... Uh, the configuration file, it's a YAML file. Um, basically, it's one of config file per instance. You clone them and launch multiple instances, and they're all managed through the scripting infrastructure. Uh, this uh, top part here is where you define the identifier for this, which is basically how it defines it within libvert, uh, or within KVM, the domain. So each one gets a unique name. And you can define your images. So, of course, you can run separate images at once. Uh, if they're stored on the host, this could be on an NFS mount. It could be on 
in the object storage, however you want to access uh, this data, it's fine. It's not I.O. bound, per se. Uh, next is <clears throat> some more of the more interesting stuff here, which is the uh, where you define how many, basically how much resources on the host you're going to give the, uh, uh, the VM instance. So how many vCPUs? Today, as you see, there's one for the virtual RE, and uh, there's one is all you really need for today. It doesn't really, adding more isn't going to necessarily get you much more performance. So that coming in the future, adding more will definitely give you more scaling and more performance, but today, not to, uh, it's just the current architecture of our uh, control plane. Uh, the amount of memory, uh, minimum is one gigabyte, and that's enough to do uh, some basic functions. As we get later in the performance demos, you're seeing uh, allocating uh, eight or 16 gigabytes of memory to it because when you have 500,000 prefixes, you start consuming a lot of memory, you need to have some, wor some workspace to work with. And then the PFE is uh, six gigabytes, that's the minimum that we support. Uh, for, ver for uh, various reasons in how to build CAM and the buffers that are required to handle the packet processing. So a few questions. This YAML file, uh, yep. local resident on the, it's on the uh, device itself, essentially. Yes. Okay. And so what's the process for, like, if I wanted to update this for whatever reason, or I guess would I, mm -hmm. um, is there a reload? It, this is static, so it's at, it's at launch. I gotcha. So it's at start. Okay, cool. So cool. If you, it's not a dynamic. I, I see. Okay. You can't change this dynamic, no. Uh, this is what is, it's read and parsed by the scripting infrastructure, yeah. and then it does things like uh, signing the MAC addresses. These are things you have to sign, MAC address, right. the IP address that you're using for management uh, that gets assigned to the, so these are for the DHCP service that's provided by okay. um, Libvirt. Okay, cool. Um, the device type here, this you'll see as we go further along, this changes Vert.io for, for this instance. It doesn't have an option. When we go to the next, there's the other image, the performance where you can choose, it'll do Vert.io which is where RF said you get three gig, or you do SRIOV, which will give you uh, up to 40 gig, for instance. Um, and also, in this section here, move down, you have where you define the interfaces. This is where you actually define, and uh, the infrastructure creates the interfaces uh, for you within uh, using the delivered APIs. So right here I have configured two, and I've commented out two. Uh, we can scale up, we can do 23 today, and we can go larger. These are the physical interfaces, of course. You can create as many logical interfaces, well, up to what we scaled to, tested to. Um, thousands is what we've done. All right. So uh, this diagram, similar to the first one, it shows how uh, there's a two configuration files, as I mentioned. You have one for the host, and we have another one called the Junos binding file, Junos dev binding file, which is used for the vert IO. Because there's not a direct one-to-one -one relationship as SRV, where you're mapping it to, a, to either a physical function or a virtual function on a NIC, what with the scripting infrastructure, instead of making you manually set up with the bridge, bridge control and all of the utilities to map these uh, interfaces to, the, to uh, the virtual interfaces, to the physical interfaces, or create point-to-point -point bridges and so forth to connect things, uh, they, you can do that with our configuration file. And uh, with SRIV, of course, you're not going to connect bridge interfaces together, right? Just out of curiosity, what is the scripting infrastructure? It's Bash. Okay. Agnostic. Cool. It's Bash, and we use some Python okay. libraries. Bash and Python? Yeah, Bash and Python. Oh, okay. And Python APIs to access Libre. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, this is what the what the configuration file looks like. Uh, if we see here, we can see there's three separate links. It's, everything is entered as a, two endpoints. You can add the same bridge device to multiple endpoints. So you, that's how you get multiple devices in the same bridge. Uh, you can have uh, Junos devices uh, as, a, as a type. This is. Uh, how you configure to a bridge. As you see here, we have a Junos device connected to a bridge and a host device connected to a bridge. Uh, and there were, there's another above it, which is, is hidden, is another device. So you can have multiple devices, multiple interfaces across multiple VMXs. If you notice, there's the VM name as well is noted, is, is noted there. So you get a multiple instances where they could communicate across the bridge and use the same interface out, or you could do point to point between them. Uh, as you see at the bottom here, we can just say can, Junos device is Junos device. And in essence, what this does is parse it out and then create uh, the Linux bridges and so forth within the host for you. 
So we found out recently a customer of ours actually used this for a network simulation, and they were able to instantiate like 117 instances uh, on a pretty beefy server. Sure. So yeah. Yeah, because you, you, your limitation is memory at that yeah. point. Yeah. It's not like you're pushing any you know severe traffic exactly. loads through it. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, next. The uh, regular PFE image and how it works. And it's a one-to-one -one relationship. We're not spending too much time on this slide. You see you have the Genos to port devices that are defined in the control plane, which map to uh, VFP ports that are defined uh, through our uh, PFE uh, infrastructure. And then they connect. They are mapped via uh, libvirt to the... the uh, Is that a UV? Hmm? Is that a UV port? It's a, it's a UV port, yes. The, the virtual uh, function, which are tied directly to the physical interface. <clears throat> There's only difference, uh, well, um, first, uh, if you notice the, the processor requirements are, a little, are higher, so you need Ivy Bridge at a minimum to execute or to run the performance images. And that's just because we take full advantage of all of the virtualization functions starting at Ivy Bridge and moving forward. So any newer uh, Haswell or, or uh, Broadwell will work. Uh, the number of uh, CPUs also has gone up. And that goes back to the polling mode. Whereas in the vert IO, you share one, one vCPU across all uh, IO ports. With this, you're en ending up with one per, per interface. And that's why. So for this instance, if you'll see at the bottom here, um, we're configuring uh, two interfaces. And that's why you have uh, their uh, seven CPUs. Um, because there's that, and then you have uh, three, four worker cores. Um, you'd map the uh, NIC here. So this is where you type, map it to the physical interface on the host, which is however it's named on the host. This particular one is PU514. It could be whatever. However, Intel's driver is recognized. And then you define uh, the port speed and MTU here as well. So now we're into the uh, two demo uh, short videos that I have uh, for VMX. This one, is, we call it the performance demo. It's a virtual PE, as, as RF mentioned. And what we'll, you'll see here is we have a test set that's connected across a topology, uh, one port connected to a physical CE router, sending in several, uh, about 1,500 uh, flows worth of uh, uh, data. And then on the other side, uh, you have traffic that's similarly coming into the core, and it's bidirectional, connected to a P router. And then they're both going into two 10 gig interfaces on the, the virtual PE, VMX. Um, as uh, Soraya mentioned, there's several um, features enabled, lag, Q and Q, BFD, L3 VPN, so forth. This particular configuration of the server has, two, the server itself has 256 gigabytes of RAM, but we are only currently using 32 or assigning 32 to this host. And we're using eight vCPUs for uh, the PFE. And of course, as I had mentioned before, one for the control plane. And this, of course, is SRIOV for, because of the performance. So what you see here is a, is a screen from a uh, Ixia test set. And what um, you're seeing here is the throughput uh, updated on a second by second basis. I paused it at the moment. Showing how much throughput it is, and on the far right, you'll notice that we're, we're, we're saturating the Ethernet link at 100%. Uh, the actual good put's a little lower because of the end cap, decap. Uh, but in essence, we're getting uh, about 9 million packets a second. And that's with uh, the, the, the 8 vCPUs. Um, but those, with those 8 vCPUs, what we're actually using, though, is uh, one physical core and one hyperthread core for that, CPU, for that same CPU. And you can see that is illustrated here. This is just simple pop on the host. And using Libvirt, you do the CPU affinity, and that's how you anchor the, the different processes to the threads. And if you look here, it's highlighted at the top. The, at the top, those are the actual cores. And at the, the bottom, the uh, 38 through 41, those are the hyperthreaded cores married to the ones at the top. So. In essence, what we're really doing is 20 gig on four cores instead of eight physical cores, which is where we get eight cores, eight physical cores for uh, 40 gigabytes, uh, gigabits a second of throughput. And as you notice, the, they're pretty much pegged at 100% due to the poll mode 
And that'll be there regardless of you're sending packets or not. It's not just because we're loading it. <coughs> uh, this is the memory utilization that we're currently at. As of that 16 gig, we're only using about 25%, so we have much room to grow. And also, uh, you'll see that here's the summary of the uh, crowding table, or the BGP summary, where we have about 500,000 prefixes, uh, 500,000 uh, LSPs, and uh, 200 VRFs configured with six, uh, 620 IFLs running. It's just a it's output showing all the different uh, routing table things. <coughs> now uh, we're do we are going to the uh, IPsec or secure transport mode. This is our site to site uh, VPN feature that uh, RF mentioned uh, and group VPN, but this is the site to site. So what we have is 100 tunnels on this one, and uh, we do. I, I'm going to show a small packet and a large packet throughput. <coughs> All traffic is bidirectional, and we're using uh, AES encryption, AES-128 in this case. Uh, that's what we'll be supporting. AES is what we're supporting with uh, IPsec, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We can do 3DES as well, uh, yes. but it's lower performance because Intel offers mm -hmm. uh, acceleration using AES. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the server configuration for this demo. It's not the same physical host, so it's slightly different. Uh, it's less cores. Uh, the other one was 12. This is six physical cores and memory and so forth. Uh, the memory utilizations, we're giving about only two, two gig is required for the, the uh, RE, or two gig is what we have configured. And uh, the, the virtual PE is only eight gigabytes. Again, it's SRIOV, and they're all A2599 NICs. I think they're X520 NICs for mo almost all of our <coughs> And here we have uh, the 100 tunnels. Uh, they're at the top, um, and you'll see the throughput is two gig bidirectional at 1400 bytes, uh, 1460 specifically, due to the overhead for IPsec. And uh, there's a one flow per tunnel for this test. This is for um, one of our, our builds that we're, we're going through uh, testing with right now. And we're doing about 185,000 packets per second uh, with uh, no loss. And that's with four worker cores. And this is the 64-byte uh, frames. We're doing 250K. So it's, it's more and 140 meg per second. And we can scale up to many more tunnels. This is just the number we picked. Uh, you add more cores, you get more throughput. It's that simple. And with this, as you see again, uh, we're still pinned to the, uh, that one node as it's a dual socket. So all the six uh, threads are tied to that core. And that's all. Does anybody... Have any questions? Good stuff.